Okay, let's do this. Hello, my soccer universe. Let's discuss whether the Premier League is really currently the best league. And um, I'm going to do this by looking at a few graphs and numbers and to kind of see where we're at, to what conclusion we're coming. Um, I'm wearing, of course, an England jersey to represent the entirety of England, the entirety of the Premier League. I, th I don't think it's a Premier League jersey, and I just realized that most of my Premier League jerseys are behind my head. So here you go. Few. Here we are between Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, and Newcastle. I think I hang back there. Again, we'll look at a few uh, graphs and I will start with um, the UEFA five year ranking where we look at the year by year. Uh, numbers. So, here we are. What we're looking at are the UEFA points that uh, uh, countries slash leagues um, get for each year. We're looking only at the top five leagues. So we have in yellow, we have La Liga, we have in red the Premier League, we have in green Serie A, in black uh, the Bundesliga and in blue uh, League A. So this is kind of what we always call the top five leagues. Uh, just looking at it and looking at all the numbers, I know we can already say that League A is always towards the bottom and it probably would be more appropriate in many ways to talk only about the top four leagues. And I'm going uh, for the last 10 seasons, so we're going all the way back to 2009-10 when Inter won the Champions League, 10-11 when Barcelona, 11-12 Chelsea. 12-13, we have the Bundesliga, because that was the All-German final. Then we had the All-Madrid final in 13-14, with Real Madrid winning, 14-15, Barcelona-Juventus. So here, Serie A is peaking. Then 15-16, the Madrid final, the second part. Uh, again, Real winning, and this is all. And then La Liga actually takes a turn a lower. We have 16-17, uh, Real-Juventus. Uh, Real winning and then we already see the Premier League was kind of level even going down slightly and took a sharp upturn in 17-18 when Liverpool made it to the Champions League final but more importantly four Premier League teams won the Champions League groups and five advanced to the next round uh, so a pretty big uh, year for uh, England already there and this year with having four teams in the finals and um, generally, all teams advancing very deep in the tournament. We had, I think, four quarterfinalists uh, from England in the Champions League. Uh, Chelsea and Arsenal made kind of an easy run through the Europa League. And most remarkably, the only teams that have been eliminated by non-English uh, opposition were Burnley in the qualification to the Europa League and Manchester United by Barcelona. Uh, and the only other English team that was eliminated was Manchester City at the hands of Spurs Tottenham. So we can clearly see there's a steep upturn. Spain, La Liga was almost untouchable in the years um, between 13-14 to 15-16. But since then, the Premier League has caught up and had now twice in a row the best ranking. So this is a clear indication that at the moment... The Premier League is the best league in Europe and by extension uh, if you subscribe to uh, to the fact that uh, the best league in Europe is also the best in the world, the Premier League would in that case be the best soccer league in the world. I want to say soccer league now. Um, and when we look at just the points of uh, this year spread out, we can clearly see again that England and Spain are ahead of the other three with England taking the clear advantage. Italy had kind of a weak year this year. Germany actually uh, not that bad, especially with Frankfurt going so deep. France, as you can see, France is always lagging a little bit behind. And now what I want to do, I want to um, compare these values from the UEFA points to the actual market values uh, of the teams and the leagues. Uh, the market values are probably I've chosen because they are the easiest to obtain. And I chose those from transfermarkt.com. Uh, so uh, it's a page where you can find market values or estimated market values of all teams, leagues, 
uh, players and so on. So a very informative site. And let's look at the average market value of each league. And what you can already see right off the bat is that the Premier League is by far, on average, the most valuable league. Why did I take averages here? Because um, all leagues except Germany play with 20 teams. Germany plays with 18 teams. So if I would um, aggregate those, all the others have two teams more. So in order to be more fair, I took the averages. Uh, and actually, um, it hit Italy a little bit because Italy, with two teams more, uh, dropped slightly below Germany. If we would take totals, they would be slightly above Germany. But uh, Italy and Germany are very, very comparable in terms of market value. And also, as we've seen in European performances, with Germany actually being slightly better. Um, and you know, Frankfurt has done very well against uh, Italian opposition uh, this year. France clearly falls below. So we can see that there's a huge advantage in market value and if market value means also quality of players uh, of the Premier League over Spain and the others. I think Spain is closer to, uh, or we can see Spain is closer to all the others than um, to the Premier League, which makes this, let's go back to the uh, European points. I know they're not on the same scale, but uh, just to compare the pattern, the performance of Spain and Germany in comparison are actually quite good. You could even say that they are uh, relatively overperforming as uh, what the market value would suggest. Now, to be fair, you would say, okay, the average market value of the league, this includes all the teams uh, of uh, this league, and we only should look at the teams that actually played in Europe. Fair? If we do so, note first of all how the scale here, here's 450 million euros. Oops, it jumps to 900 million. So we actually, if we just look at the, Euro the European teams, uh, we shoot far up. And from now on, all those market values will be shown on the same scale. We see that Spain actually gets a lot closer uh, to England in that case, which is more or less what we expect. And if we just go quick, this looks a lot more similar. Again, Germany outperforming the market value of its European teams. Um, and the next point, of course, I mean, still, the, the Premier League has a huge advantage, but Spain is closer still. I think Spain is still closer to uh, Serie A than it is to uh, the Premier League, although it's very, very close. Yeah, I still think it uh, would be that, um, or roughly that. So uh, there is a clear ranking here showing that England is currently the most valuable team. Now, if we split it up by just the Champions League teams, the trend reverses slightly. And you can guess why. If you want to look at Champions League teams, uh, Spain has th two huge teams and one that, uh, as we'll see, is very close there. That's Barcelona, Real Madrid, the probably the two most uh, valuable teams in the world, although Manchester City is uh, breaking these two. Also, Atletico Madrid is not that far behind. So uh, if you just look at Champions League teams, uh, there's a clear... Um, trend reversal, which means um, that the Spanish teams in the Champions League should always be expected to go deep into, in, into the tournament. So for that reason, having two English teams in the Champions League final is actually quite some achievement. Also note how France is suddenly in third spot, and you can guess why that is. Well, there were only uh, were there three French teams. Uh, at least two were in the group stages, for sure. Um, and one of them is PSG, and PSG really pulls it out. Sorry for this uh, marker here. Now, if we look on the other side, Europa League, average market value of Europa League teams, now you can clearly see uh, what's, what's happening. You see the, all the values are dropping, but for some reason the Premier League is not dropping as far, and it's pretty clear. The Premier League teams that are even in the Europa League, so not at the top, top level, are still a lot more valuable and a lot closer to the top than they are in Spain, Italy, Germany and France. Actually, Germany doesn't move as much and Italy doesn't move as much, but for Spain it is quite apparent how the drop happens from 
Champions League to Europa League. So this comparative balance that exists in the Premier League and to a lesser degree in uh, Serie A in Germany is really helping uh, England as compared to Spain. And that's what I want to look at in the uh, next picture, um, where we will now compare the points uh, in the league as to uh, compare to the market value for each of the um, five leagues that, that we're looking at. So here's the Premier League with the red dots. Here we have the points and this is now um, as of the 13th of March. So the Premier, ah, March, 13th of May, the Premier League is already finished. La Liga still has a round to go. Uh, we have the points that these teams uh, have down here. So we have uh, Manchester City is this dot here, Liverpool is this dot here, very close together, almost 100 points with quite some distance to the next four, uh, which is Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal and Manchester United. This dot uh, surprised me a little bit, is Arsenal, who are not as close to the others as we'll see. And then this is the pack. Um, and here we have the market values and we clearly see that uh, Manchester City is the most valuable team in the league quite by some. Uh, Liverpool is not uh, quite at the billion um, euro mark, uh, but they are quite away from uh, Manchester City, more away than they are to Chelsea. So Liverpool's performance this year was really um, kind of an outlier in a positive sense. They really got the best out of the squad, you might even say they outperformed. they outperformed their own expectations, which probably is fair, fair to say, because they really stretched themselves. Same thing here for Spain, and here we see the clear difference. This is Barcelona, this is Real Madrid, oh, this is Atletico Madrid, this is Real Madrid, sorry, got it, got, got messed up. So Real Madrid slightly above Atletico Madrid, another thing that surprised me a lot. The market values are also taken uh, with dates of today, which is again 13th of May 2019. So maybe that's why the uh, Real Madrid value dropped, because uh, the team is not as valuable as it was probably at the beginning of the season. But what we can clearly see in Spain, it is three teams and then there's the rest. In England, we have at least five, if not six teams, and then there's the rest. The rest has a very similar pattern and even um, if I look at the points, there's a lot of equality in points here, whereas here the bottom teams really dropped off and just note that this is Fulham, which completely, um, given the market value, completely underperformed uh, this season. Again, they bought some players and so on, so it's not uh, the cleanest of um, comparisons, but it gives us at least an, in an indication where we would expect it. So. When I compare La Liga and the Premier League, we can clearly see that the Premier League is a much more even competition. And we can see that even uh, Liverpool pushed Manchester City, which also meant that Liverpool was always going. Whereas Barcelona had the league title wrapped up, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid had very very early, not much to play for any, any anymore, which clearly showed in their uh, Champions League performances as well. And the other teams are just not strong enough. Whereas in the Premier League, I mean, the top teams uh, are very close to each other. There's a much broader field of top teams, which is always healthy for a league. And it's always a hallmark of a great league uh, when the teams are roughly, you know, a pattern like this, close together and they are pushing each other and not kind of uh, getting ahead of the uh, ahead of the pack. Now, this all can change, of course, if Real Madrid goes on a huge spending spree, uh, which is projected and will push Barcelona. Uh, if there's a title race again in Spain, I actually could see that either one of these teams going far in the competition and anymore. And yes, Barcelona's uh, exit to in, at the hands of Liverpool might have been a fluke looking at the results, but when I look at the overall play, I think Liverpool over both ties was the better team. Let's look at the other two, uh, three leagues compared to the Premier League. Serie A clearly a lot lower market values. I mean, Juventus has a lower market value than Manchester United, although Juventus is generally considered a much better team. Uh, and then here, those are the other big four. This is Napoli, this is Inter, and this is Milan, this is Roma. So you see those four. Note how Atalanta is outperforming its own expectations. And this here is Fiorentina. Again, 
very close battle for relegation here. And in Italy we still have two rounds to play, so uh, there's nothing yet decided, but we have two clear outliers to the bottom. Also note how Italy's teams, as compared to Spain, uh, may be slightly more valuable towards the bottom. It's really the top that um, is so separated from the bottom. And for the Bundesliga, it's actually a similar picture as in England. Uh, I think that, that if you look at it, the uh, uh, absolute distance between Bayern and Dortmund is pretty much the same as between um, City and Liverpool. And then you have two more teams that are kind of hanging in there uh, in terms of market value and the rest is then where England is but it's much much closer the Bundesliga the one thing that they pride themselves rightly so is that they are much more level playing field and we can see that here yes we have the two outs liars with Dortmund and Bayern but the rest is actually quite close together France, on the other hand, there's one huge outlier, which is PSG, which shoots up right in this top position. Um, and then the rest are also rents. I mean, uh, this here is Lyon. Lyon would be, uh, yeah, the second in France, the third in Germany. Uh, they would be, as we can see here, fifth in Italy, fourth or fifth. So um, France, this seems to me really like a league where one team dominates all and then the others are kind of in there. Look at Lille. Lille is not a very valuable team at the moment, but they're still uh, overperforming quite by some. I think this here is Rennes and this is Bordeaux. So um, those two, especially Bordeaux, is clearly having a horrible season. Okay, so the Premier League is at the moment the best league in the world and it's mainly down to competitive balance and that thanks to the money influx into the league, uh, there is there is a bigger crop of teams that actually could challenge for those top spots. And we always talk in England about the top six. I remember in the 90s when Italy was top, we always were talking about um, the top six, top seven teams. This is basically how a healthy league should look like, that the big boys are not as far ahead. And that's a trend that is kind of worrisome for many leagues. I mean, Spain at least has two big boys. Actually, we can make a case to so see three big boys, but we know that, for instance, one of the most valuable players of Atletico is leaving this season. So it will be all down. Can Real Madrid push Barcelona again? This might be good for their performances, but I'm not sure if it will have a good effect on the rest of the league who are also rents. Uh, Italy is maybe closer to the structure, but I think there um, this discrepancy is because of the mismanagement of the two Milan teams. Uh, Napoli and Roma are actually doing a great job. Uh, the two Milan teams should be on level with Juventus. Uh, maybe they're getting there. And in France, I know France, I would actually be very tempted to drop them out of this absolute top crop um, of the teams of the leagues it because outside of PSG there is really not much there honestly um, by the way I just realized that the last dot was not Bordeaux but this was Monaco just now so basically money makes goals not directly but indirectly the better squads you can have and the more teams can have a good squad, the better your league will be. And this at the moment is the clear strength of the Premier League. I hope this was somewhat informative. Let me know what you think about this. I know it's maybe not the most ideal numbers. I would like to, um, to uh, look at the budget of each of the teams, of how much uh, they have coming in and so on, so to uh, get a little bit more of the money factors in. I thought that market value is a, a good comparison. It also be good to have all the numbers at the end of the season, but I thought it's now that we have just the semi-finals behind us. It's a good point to look at this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or others, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.